Well, gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. We really appreciate it, so thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for having us. Jeff, can I start with, uh, with you? What do you think some of the latest trends are in uh, transportation? So when I was thinking about this question, um, I really tried to sum it down into a couple of things being agility and equity. Instead of really talking about specific technologies, I think agencies are really, really looking at agility from a standpoint of can the solutions be applied to lots of different needs and also can those solutions actually evolve as technology advances in the next few years. And then from an equity standpoint, I really think they're trying to focus on that complete trip. Um, one, one being across all modes, that equity across all modes, but also an equity across all communities, um, whether they be a, a disabled community, socioeconomic, geographic communities, but that complete trip and that equity. And I see trends really moving in that direction. You uh, know, I agree with what Jeff just said, but to add on to that, I think that what's happening today is we have clear defined uh, performance criteria. And so in the old days, you know, it was all about safety. Today we have more performance criteria that's helped driving the technology. So greenhouse gas reduction, equity, you've got safety of course. So there's a lot of different measurements that we're striving for that then helps develop the technologies to solve those issues. I mean, maybe an unfair question, but how do you think, those are big issues that you're addressing. I mean, how do you think we're doing? Well, in the area of safety, not very well. I mean, my, the information that I got earlier was about there's about 20, over 20,000 people killed in the first half of this year. Last year was a, a bad year. I mean, it's, it's been right around 40,000 fatalities in the United States over the past couple of decades. And so, you know, we need to do a better job there. When you, but when you start getting into these other, other issues, it'll help drive some of the solutions that will have benefits in the safety area as well as equity, pollution, congestion relief, and things like that. So, Jeff, I mean, we're, we're still in a pandemic, you know, hopefully coming out the other side of it, hopefully, but we're still in, in, in a pandemic. How do you think COVID has, has uh, changed the dialogue over the last couple of years? I think it's really driven our ability to integrate some tools into collaboration, uh, being more collaborative. Uh, and we're really forced into using things like Microsoft Teams when people were in different locations and so forth. And now that we're starting to get back together in physical locations, we're still actually using those tools like Microsoft Teams um, for incident management, for example, where we can actually track and you can sign in at any point and see the continuous conversation that's occurred, access video, access all these things. So it really pushed us to use those collaborative tools um, and we're continuing to use them even today as we get back together. And is that a challenge to be able to, uh, to uh, you know, coordinate both the the physical and the virtual, if you like? I, it, it was at first, but I think when you're put in the heat of it, just like with a hurricane coming, you figure it out. And so even though it was somewhat of a challenge, people figured it out very quickly because the end goal was still there. You know, protect lives, save lives, get incidents off the road. The intent was still there, so. With every great disaster comes great opportunity. And I think it, it showcased the fact that we have kinks in our supply chain. I think it showed that uh, in the case of safety, the fatality rate is still very high, even though BMT, vehicle miles traveled, went down. But it's a great opportunity. And so we, we showed how technology could bridge the gap in some cases. And so, Jeff, you're correct in, in that, the, your assessment, but also where we provide customer-facing services when the people, the staff had to go home, we were still able to issue driver's licenses, address their phone calls, address concerns. and so. As Jeff said, we've adapted using technology to try to make sure we fill in those gaps caused by the, the breakage and the linkage from COVID. Randy, let me, let, me, let me turn to you. Let me ask you this. So, so double-edged question, really. Do you think we're being innovative enough in transportation? And, and if I ask you to put your, your future goggles on, what, what do you think some of the trends are going to be moving into the future? Well, really quickly, so if you look back in time, there was not a lot of, you know, although we innovated in transportation, I think the biggest innovation, in, in my opinion, for innovation was the iPhone. It brought internet to your pocket, to the, to the user. And you look at the innovations in transportation after that, transportation network companies, you've got accessibility, you can run uh, mobility as a service platforms, you can get scheduling right on your phone. Those technologies have gone, have gone way up, so I'm really, bullish on the fact that I think in the future, the younger people that are coming into transportation see transportation a little bit differently and are going to find solutions leveraging those technologies like the iPhone or the smartphone or the smart device in the future. 
Jeff, what do you see the future? Yeah, I want to piggyback on what you said about the younger users, and I think that's where agencies and organizations need to rely on the private sector and the market research to know how those users want to receive data, how those users are going to actually change their trip or change their the, their decisions based on the information they're getting. And I think we need to be sure that we're listening to the private sector to say, here's, here's the way people want to get that data. At the same time, I think the private sector needs to listen to the organizations on what are their pain points right now? What are they really trying to address? So we can come up with the cool gadgets, but are we really helping them address those really critical needs that they have? Well, gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed for uh, joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's great to be here. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.